Oh, it's already sent, sir. Oh, great. Thank you. When you start screen sharing, it moves all the windows. Yeah. People don't adding themselves. We have 16 participants and almost 16 there. And Lorenzo, thank you. Now that we have scribes, we will have check-ins. So, um, so this is where, for if anybody's new, we just go around and we check in and we say who we are, what we do, what's happening with security um, in our week, um, or you know, so you can feel free to share something personal if you like. Um, and, uh, and, you know, just anything that, that the group would, it doesn't have to be things Six Security has done. It could be some article you read about security, a conference we, you went to, we welcome kind of cross fertilization because we can't all do all the things. Um, so I'm Sarah Allen. I'm one of the co-chairs of Six Security. And, um, most of what I've been doing in the last week is covered in the agenda. I've been doing a lot of, um, meetings and repo wrangling. So we'll cut, we'll get to that when we get to it. Jonathan. Uh, thanks. Um, so spent a lot of time this week um, updating some of the security tests uh, and having a look at KIND. Uh, this is all based on the threat model that we have. Um, so yeah, just getting uh, into some deep KIND automation at the minute. Can you say who we is in the threat model we have? Uh, so that's JP Morgan. Excellent. Thanks, Jonathan. Daniel. Uh, hi, my name is Daniel Zirov. I'm a security engineer at Adavinta. And past weeks, uh, I didn't do anything with containers, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Excellent. And thanks for sharing your video. I've heard from um, people who don't have great audio connections or aren't native English speakers that seeing people talk, if you're willing to turn on your video when you're speaking, is helpful to people here. Lutz. Hi, my name is Lutz Winke. I work for Figo, which is a fintech in Germany. Um, my uh, doings in security this week was mainly getting devs to do more tests uh, in, in preparation for something like in total in the future, um, long term. Excellent, thank you. Nadir. Hi, uh, I'm a field engineer at VMware. Um, so this week I've been been talking upstream in Kubernetes and Cyclus lifecycle. We're going through a security sprint in uh, KubeADM. It's one of the bootstrappers of Kubernetes. Great. Justin Kappas. Sure, yeah, I presented. So is my, am I unmuted? Yes, we can hear you now. All right, sorry, the, there was some visual problem with the UI. Uh, yeah, so I'm. Uh, this week, I've been doing, uh, presented to the TOC, as I think we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Um, and also, of course, doing a lot with uh, being Toto and related things like that. Um, Craig. Hey, I'm Craig. I work at Heroku. I'm also part of the Kubernetes Security Auto Working Group. Um, so this week, we are actually pretty close to, I think, next week having that audit and all the, the, the white paper threat model and the security assessment released, except for a couple of issues that are gonna be under embargo with the product security, uh, the PSC for Kubernetes for a little bit of time and get those issues fixed. Um, so it's uh, exciting news for, for that project. Right, yeah, and that would, I think that that might be something that we, if you're interested in coming back and presenting it, maybe we could have a little brainstorm about presentations we might like from different people in the group who are involved in different activities. Um, when, when, uh, when it wraps up and you feel ready to, um, that might be neat. Yeah, that's great. Mark Underwood. Maybe you're muted. Hey, did you call me? Sorry. Trying yes. to double duplex. Hey, everybody. Okay. It's Mark Underwood. I apologize for the background Hello, noise. We're trying to wrap up standards and ontologies in one meeting. It's not going to happen. And no news from me. I'm uh, at Synchrony working in cybersecurity. We're 
we're still trying to build knowledge graphs around cybersecurity. So people interested in that, uh, you know, ping me. Otherwise, no progress. All right, thanks, Mark. Leonardo. Hello, everyone. I'm Leo Di Donato. I'm one of the maintainer of Falco Container Native Security Runtime. This week, basically, we worked, uh, me and Lorenzo, uh, to cinch with Cur53 for the internal audit of uh, Falco, and we are almost there. Basically, in, uh, soon, the audits, the audits will be published, published pub in a public way. And so this is what we have done about the security topic. Excellent. Congratulations. Um, yeah, please share it out on Slack as soon as it's published. I'm sure everybody. Everybody loves your security audits in this group. Uh, Lorenzo. Um, I'm Lorenzo Fontana. I work on Falco with Leonardo. Uh, my update is basically the same as Leonardo, but I also want to add that uh, on the Falco side, we have been doing a lot of uh, improvements in um, how the project in the stability of the project, basically, and we think that that will also improve the overall security of the project itself. It's just little things that make the project more maintainable and uh, easy, easier to um, to spot, you know, uh, the the bad parts of it. So I'm very proud of that, and I hope that by doing this, we also fix a lot of the things found in the security. Right, Brandon. Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm from IBM Research. Um, so I guess what happened recently was uh, we were at KubeCon China. Um, there was some interest in the group. Um, I think I got some feedback on, uh, you know, some folks were interested in the idea of uh, if we were able to give certain recommendations on security configurations in um, um, Kubernetes clusters and things like that. Um, other than that, we, we managed to meet up a fairly small group. I think I, I met a few people in person there. I think I met Sipeng and uh, Kaita from Belco. We went out for dinner. Um, so that was fun. Um, more recently, during the past week, um, I'm moving apartments, so <laughs> nothing much done. Um, still have a few more boxes to go. Great. Thanks, Brendan. Good luck with that. Amy. Thanks. Yeah, I'm the CNCF program manager. Um, last week was KubeCon Shanghai. Um, my real kind of role today is uh, coming in and chatting about Logo, but that's later in the agenda. So, thanks, Amy. Ash. Hi, I'm Ash. I work on the Open Policy Agent. Uh, this week, I've just been working on OPA and how we can integrate with Istio. So that's pretty much what I'm doing this week. Nothing much. Thanks. Okay. Emily. I'm Emily Fox from the National Security Agency in the United States. Um, just got off the call about uh, doing more program planning for the security day that is coming up. Um, we'll talk more about that during the agenda. Aaron. Uh, hi there, I'm Aaron uh, with the uh, MUFG Union Bank. Uh, security engineer. Uh, this is my first one of these meetings, so I don't have anything um, unique to report. Uh, broadly speaking, um, uh, data activity monitoring and open policy agent are some things that I have on my plate, uh, though I have not done anything specific with them uh, in the past week or two. Great. Welcome. Peter. Hey, this is Peter here. I'm a software engineer with a background in security, working at Teradata and uh, I've been working to solve um, for software supply chain in our, uh, uh, you know, uh, environment. So uh, integrating open policy agent and a few of, and evaluating a few other uh, CNCF projects to help us achieve secure software supply chain. Great. Um, that was Ben, Peter, Christian. I've been trying to highlight people so that I remember where Hi, I'm, I'm Christian. I work on the Google Cloud Security team. Um, we have been thinking a lot about how to express policy composition. So policies on policies, how meta, some people call it meta policy. This is in the context of how we can uh, uh, enable what we call the um, platform engineer, I, I think, right? We, we decided that might be another persona. So I'm still interested in having that discussion at some point. Oh, yeah, that's great. Did you write an issue for it? 
I think I did. Yes, okay. I, I did. I did. Um, yeah, if you add it, I'll find it. I'm going to write a note. Yeah. Um, thank you. Carlos. Hey, um, I'm Carlos Vicencio. I'm working uh, for Intel as a security researcher. I was working in some PRs about the logo on this community and also uh, selecting two uh, projects that will be and review it on the security assessment. That's pretty much all. All right, excellent. So I'm going to skip down to, um, I'm gonna put this actually below. Um, Emily, if you're, are you online? Can you um, add the issue link to it before we get there on the agenda? Um, I wanted to just do a couple of highlights on PRs and issues that need input. So um, we've been doing some wrangling of um, trying to get so that we don't have as much in progress. Um, and so one of the things that um, we co-chairs talked about is, and, and we've talked about informally in the groups, but we were formalizing it, which is we did these draft landscape categories earlier this calendar year. It was an effort that was started in 2018. And there's been a bunch of feedback that I'm actually working on um, making sure it's all written up is issues. Um, but we've realized that having more contextual material when we're finalizing these categories is important. So we have a while back, we started the white paper, we put it on pause. JJ is going to spearhead picking it up again, but we decided that we would, we would formally pause this and put a stake in the sand that we would revisit it after we have a draft of the white paper. So I wanted to let people know that um, we, we added another item to our checklist of how we're gonna get to a landscape. And, um, and then uh, we're kind of queuing that up for a little later in our road, in our to be figured out roadmap. And um, the process that we're following um, that we're still in the midst of is we are actually echoing our process in GitHub. So um, what we're, for those of you who are new, we are, we have a proposal process. If you look in governance, anybody in the group can propose something that the group would work on. If you actually want to do work on it, then you can make it a proposal. <laughs> if you just have an idea, but you're not sure you want to work on it, then it's a suggestion. So proposals carry a little more weight because we know somebody's actually volunteering to work on it. And then um, when the, and that, that's brought to group discussion at some point. And then the, um, if we all decide that we are going to do it and we have bandwidth, then we make it a project. And so we are now, um, Brendan did a lot of triage on the issue wrangling and Howard is working on doing that on the policy side in a different time zone. And, um, and then Justin Capos is wrangling all the security audits. And so we're trying to get everything tracked in GitHub. So then we will have a number of issues that are projects and we will queue them up in a, this, if we don't change anything, this is what we're actually doing. And then we can have a discussion about whether that's the right priority. So, um, so that's what we're working on right now. And if you're interested in kind of getting into the weeds and making sure that all of the stuff's written down that we're working on, join the triage channel on Slack. Um, so other issues that need input, Amy, do you want to talk about the logo? Sure thing. Um, yeah. So we've got a final, um, call out for being able to say, if there's any feedback that you would like to be able to put in for the logo, please do so. Uh, we're about to go back to our designer at CNCF, um, and probably come back with roughly four options to be able to say, here's where you can move from there. So. Um, if you can get that done, I know we've got the July 4th holiday coming up. If you can get it in by the end of Friday, um, Odd will be able to come back with more directions for us. So, and what I'd like to ask people to do is, so we, we captured notes from the last, we went around the last time and sort of people had ideas about, um, thing, you know, imagery they thought of. Um, this was actually done, this, this ideation was done before that. So our um, designer got all excited and based on some ideation that was at KubeCon, came up with these things and their own, out of their own heck, head. And so different people have pulled out different things and made a comment on them. If you agree with it, use your emojis. You can kind of emoji like different ones. Um, and then I did for an example here, my, my voice carries 
doesn't carry any more weight than anybody else's. Um, saying why you like it really helps the designer. And so I just pulled out two that captured what I, um, I liked what one of the group members said about having something iconic in a logo. So that's an example of something that would be helpful. Like if you see one of the things in this set um, that hasn't been commented on that you really like, pull it out, add it to the comment, say what you like about it, what you think it evokes. And um, if you don't like something, you can just leave it aside unless you want to vigorously say, let's not do something for reasons that other people have said that they would like to do for other reasons. So, and you can see a, a discussion about um, visual representation that maybe we shouldn't use. So, um, so please chime in on the issue if you have thoughts. Um, and um, particularly, uh, you know, welcome any reasons you have those thoughts, but any, any feedback is, is definitely valued. Um, and then also wanted to, this is a relatively minor thing, but um, it's very hard to write up the, what we do, right? And um, I, Emily gave some great feedback on like, there's been a discussion of, um, we, we have a bunch of new roles, um, relatively new in the last few months that are written up now. And there was this um, phrase that was difficult to capture, which is, what I'm trying to say is, if you take on a role in the group, it's your job to figure out what the right thing to do is and how to conform to be like having, we have a lot of ideas that are somewhat written down that we like to be, to respect each other and be friendly and we value each other's opinions and all sorts of good collaboration things that we try to do. And we try to be inclusive so that if just because one person is working on something doesn't mean that they're dictating that to the rest of the group. And so we have like a bunch of words that are trying to express the good collaborative communal feel we have, but um, it isn't really well captured. So if you have, you know, this just needs a little help to try to write this down in some way. So if you've been in the group for a while or you've been in groups like this, if you kind of know what I'm talking about and you have some idea of how to capture that in words and you're willing to wade through our governance docs, which everybody should read by the way, because uh, lots of people worked hard on them, um, then, uh, then that really could do some input. Although it's not particularly urgent, we should probably get to it at some point. Um, six security day, Emily. You wanna start talking while I bring up the issue? Yes, I can start talking now that I'm unmuted. Um, so we had a call earlier today to talk through some of the planning um, in the 209 issue that got started. So Michael um, updated the ticket content with the proposed format and layout. So we had some good discussion essentially um, boiled down to, we're really happy with the proposed format, but now the question is whether or not we go with something that's considered a more formal day at the conference, or if it's more informal. Um, so next week, what we're gonna end up doing is having um, somebody present about unconference, so we can learn a little bit more about that style. There seems to be a lot of various ways that you can do an open kind of space feel at a conference. Um, we're not necessarily looking to do a mix of both because we feel logistically that would be a little bit difficult to manage. Um, but if it's formal, we're running short on time for some of those things. If it's informal, we have plenty of time. However, it's a little bit more legwork to source presentations. Um, so if you have any feelings on anything about it, feel free to read through the comment. It's posted in the notes um, for the update of what our last meeting was. And if you have a feel one way or the other for more formal or informal, certainly post that. We'll take it into consideration as we work through and trying to figure out what's gonna work best for what we're trying to accomplish. So as a reminder, the whole point of Security Day is to bring like minds together, passionate people about security in a cloud native environment so they can discuss and work together on either identifying solutions, sharing lessons learned, um, 
anything associated with that. We're not looking to generate a standards or a body associated with the, com with the security day, but more make available any presentations that are um, put together or any notes that are taken if we do lightning talks or um, the open spaces environment. So feel free to provide comments on the tickets. We'll certainly add them, um, we'll certainly review them. And when we meet next week again to learn more about unconference, hopefully we'll have a decision by then to share with CNCF so they can begin marketing and promotions of the security day. And we have a Slack channel. Yes. Security <laughs> events. So this is, we decided that it would be or any live event. So right now we're focused on this SIG Security Day, but then this is an ongoing channel for things like this. Um, so feel free to join that channel if you're interested. And then um, JJ is going to take over as the SIG Chair um, sponsoring this um, initiative. So, um, and because it'll happen, most of the organizing will happen outside of the working group meetings. Um, any questions? Thank you, Emily, for spearheading this, and Michael, who is, I think, in another time zone and on vacation this week. Um, what's that? Michael is, is not here, he's on vacation, but anyway, yeah. Yes. But he's been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, and we appreciate that. So, report from the CNCF TOC. Uh, Justin, can you talk a little bit about um, the presentation you gave and um, I will dig up slides while you do that and link to them and, um, and a bit about the discussion that was had. Sure. So uh, basically, we just had a conversation about uh, the security assessment process, why we're doing it, what it's used for, um, what both the end users in the community are expected to get out of it and what the TOC is supposed to get out of it. Most of the feedback there was that related actually Security assessments was fairly minor, a few clarifying questions about things, um, but we had a much more spirited discussion uh, based on some which I think we're going to talk about in a little bit here. So um, um, I will. So I do want to say a couple. I actually uh, a couple quick things. So in Toto uh, assessment, uh, which is a software supply chain security project is going to be presented next Tuesday at the TOC meeting. So um, this is going to be the TOC's first chance to really look at a completed assessment and give us feedback. So it is actually a good opportunity for people to um, see what the TOC thinks about this and would be a good uh, meeting for people in general here in SIG Security to make because of this, especially if you're interested in security assessments. Um, and the other thing is, is that um, I'm going to be pushing people a little bit to uh, actually formally completely complete the OPA assessment. Uh, so Ash, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll be prodding you a bit and I'll also be prodding people from our side to finish up the very small number of very, very minor things so we can actually get a PR in. Did you want to do the, do, do you feel like we've addressed, we kind of had a shorter than um, planned presentation and Q&A session. Do you feel like that's been addressed to async or do you think that we should allocate some time for um, part two of that presentation? Because that was right before KubeCon and then it got interrupted by KubeCon EU and vacations and things. Um, I, uh, okay, so I'll leave it open to other people on the call who read over the OPA assessment and OPA documents. Were there questions that you felt like you wanted to ask in that context? Well, maybe we can just, um, I wanted to put it out there. I don't think we have to decide right now, but like I, I wanted to let Ash know and you know and, and the, the folks on the call who are reviewing that, that if it would be helpful to take it to a close to have a discussion, we can set aside time for that. Yeah, okay. and I'd like to say also that um, we definitely don't want, I, the part of my worry about doing this is making this too open-ended of a process. Yeah, We want to have a definite sort of finish point for this. And um, he came and presented and maybe we didn't allocate our time very well for that meeting. Um, but the 
you know, in general, we should be able to, to find a way to carve off something like 45 minutes of time for an assessment in the meeting itself. And, um, but, you know, we shouldn't be dragging people back multiple times except for, you know, I guess while we're still figuring out the process, which we sort of kind of are. So yeah, hopefully think- poor Santiago is the only one that really, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the process should be smoother um, after certainly, hopefully the OPA one uh, works out all the rest of the king. Yeah, I think that what the my lesson learned from the last one is just that I think the, that having the person leading the assessment facilitate the meeting to make sure that the pacing is getting the results that we want, I think will will is a nice little process improvement there. Um, so, so in terms of the other thing that um, oh, any questions on the security assessment presentation to the TOC and kind of where um, the next steps is really. Um, uh, it would be nice if you could get uh, access to this because uh, it seems it's locked. Oh, <laughs> that was not intentional. Share. Is related, Sarah. What's that? I, I have a question that's probably related, but I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I'm trying to understand because now for the sandbox exit, there's a technical due diligence to do. I'm just trying to understand um, what are the actors involved who should perform the due diligence. Is like the SIG or the TOC? Well, the um, the SIG, the TOC can add its option delegate to the SIG. So that's one of the things that we're trying to figure out with SIG security. If it's a security project and due diligence needs to be done, then we would participate in that. Um, Historically, it's been done by a TOC contributor. Like the TOC says, hey, there's anybody can volunteer as um, as a contributor. That means that you're saying, hey, if you need help, I will corral myself or people at my company to help. And, um, and so that's what, how, how the TOC started to kind of expand its footprint. And then the, the idea is that the SIGs kind of cover the span of all the projects. And so the TOC hasn't quite figured out one of the things that came up in the TOC meeting was actually having kind of like a workflow diagram would really help everybody instead of it being as ad hoc as it is like you know the TOC doesn't always speak with a single voice you know <laughs> like you never know right like you know we've gotten different requests from different TOC members and when there's contention it's, it hasn't always been clear who sets the priorities now as of a few months ago we have TOC liaisons for each sig so so if it's um, like a storage product, then the TOC would likely ask SIG storage to do diligence on a move from sandbox to incubation or incubation to graduation. However, they may also ask SIG security about it if it's an open question in some way. And so that's where we're kind of security cuts across um, a bunch of different, you know, other projects as well that might have security implications but aren't for security. And so some of that is kind of we're in that realm. And a lot of it, because the TOC doesn't always have bandwidth to figure this stuff out in the time frame that we need to know it, we've taken the approach of taking the initiative on like, hey, what do we think is important? How are we going to approach this? So we have, to the extent that we have bandwidth, if the TOC doesn't ask for help, but we're like, hey, <laughs> we kind of want to weigh in on this project, this particular project transitioning from one thing to another, we can prioritize that, um, you know, participating in that. And anybody can come to the TOC meetings and chime in or chime in on the issues. Thanks for the very detailed answer. It's more clear now. Great. And so, so one of the things that came up that I just, I definitely like, um, I, I want to discuss amongst ourselves and we'll get TOC input in as well, is that Joe, Beta, who's actually one of our TOC liaisons, um, ha- like brought up this, how do we prioritize the assessments? Where, um, you know, are they always CNCF projects? 
we had talked about that we would prioritize CNCF projects. We might not even have bandwidth to do all the CNCF projects. And we would also prioritize the ones that are specifically delivering security, except that we will also want to do in this first five, do something that is not itself for security. So we kind of get a sense of what that kind of security assessment is like. And so Justin Kapos, if you want to just chime in a little bit about how we came up with this list, um, uh, like the, the, this list that, and, and your thoughts about prioritization to kick off the discussion, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So some of this was provided to us because we were provided with a set of projects that the TOC thought were security projects. And um, we took a few of those and omitted them from that, from the review, or at least felt they were lower priority. Uh, for instance, I had just prior to this done on this with the Inspire, which is mentioned down at the bottom of the screen there. Um, and so because I'd, I had just sort of done a, actually a more rigorous audit process or assessment process than what we're doing in our assessments, um, it seemed less important for us to do that right away. The, uh, the same was sort of true of, yeah, perfect. Um, so looking at that list, uh, on that list, the things that we clearly wanted to audit were, um, were Falco and OPA. Uh, because that those were on the list of things proposed by the TOC. Intoto had also been mentioned um, because Intoto was, uh, which is a software supply chain uh, project, was uh, brought up by uh, the TOC that they would like to have it go through this process. Um, so we, uh, the Intoto project, which I'm involved with, uh, went through. I did not participate in the assessment from an assessor standpoint. Um, but we did the OPA assessment in the meantime, in terms of prior, the other things on the list there, those are projects that were largely uh, people mentioned to us as either the developer saying, hey, we would like to be a part of this, or we think this would be, it'd be good to have this assessment. Um, or um, someone else said, hey, this is a project you should look at. And in terms of the actual order, we've mostly tried to take projects when they say they're ready to go. Uh, we haven't really pushed anyone to do this when they weren't ready. Um, I do think uh, okay, the last part, the last part of Sarah's question she's asking about was prioritization. I would like to see ideally even two projects that are not security projects listed here in the first five or at least the first five or six, um, however many we decide to go to before we kind of reassess the process. Um, but I, I think having some of those projects is also important because I believe we should do this process for every project that wants to be considered for graduation. And I think there's an argument to be made that we should also at least every few years do this for every project in the CNCF. Uh, but those are just my personal opinions and don't represent anyone else's. Didn't we have a ticket open to discuss like the frequency at which these audits are supposed to be performed and at what stages and membership with the CNCF the projects are supposed to be reviewed? I feel like almost deja vu that we've, we've started to have that conversation at some point. Now I don't remember what the ticket number So was. yeah, so there's a ticket. So we, it has been decided, I think we, we should, write it all up and review it, but it was prior, it was proposed to us by the, by the TOC that we, whatever, what, that the assessments should be valid for a year and we should re review them annually. And so there's, a, I wrote up an issue that that should be, that should be written down. Um, what the annual review is, is TBD. We thought we would wait until a year goes by on one of these before we worry about exactly the content of that annual review. And we thought that for a lot of projects, that might just be a like, hey, project, has anything changed? And it's some kind of quickie thing. Um, so I think that, that that's, I think the thing that we haven't talked about it, the other half of that is how do these assessments relate to sandbox incubation and graduation yeah and, and i i know that we had i know well i remember commenting on a particular ticket where we had discussed that so i'm happy that um cncf has come forward and said like we'll do it annually um but we we get to define what the scope of that annual review is supposed to be 
but I know that the, we talked about it in at least one of the tickets and for the life of me, I cannot find it right now. But we had, we tried to figure it out, like, what should the model look like? Should it be before they graduate completely? Should it be just at each in order for them to like move from um, the sandbox incubation, whichever phase that they're currently in or trying to get into, that's when an initial review is done. Should it be like a lightweight to, for anybody that's being proposed into CNCF? How, how, what, at what time frequencies or what life cycle stages should SIG security get involved? And whether or not there is a requirement for somebody to graduate like Kubernetes has graduated, that they have a full audit, complete um, head to toes done for that effort. And I, I can't find this. So it, the, it, I've got it up on the screen here, ah, okay. which is just this, the thing, this is just that there is an annual review process documenting that and Robert's volunteered to get it into our docs. Okay. I think that um, I wanna pause on the, we should write up separately and um, you know, maybe we can have a chatter on Slack to, to find whether whether there actually is an issue that is the other thing, which is the um, the graduation processes, the like the incubation sandbox and so forth. Um, the uh, the the more substantive thing that I wanted to have discussed is so whatever we decide to do for quite a while there will be a large backlog of projects, right? CNCF has dozens of projects. There are many, many things that need to be, that would benefit from a security assessment. How do, if we were thinking about um, like going out and outreaching to projects and saying, oh, don't you want to do a security assessment? <laughs> um, do we want, like, what are the things, like, do we want to do that? Do we want to just be like, oh, well, first come, first serve, or, um, how do we want to think about um, reviewing it? And I want to, in light of um, the, uh, let me find a, I want to just remind everybody of why we're doing this, um, which is that um, I'll actually go to our charter in governance, that our mission is to reduce risk that cloud native applications expose end user data or allow other unauthorized access. And our charter is like, so generally we're doing this to reduce risk to the whole ecosystem and the security assessments themselves. I'm not going to go through this in detail, but just point out that it's here, have that kind of elaborated that we believe that one is the assessments themselves will reduce risks and that the, data that's provided and the exercise will itself accelerate adoption of cloud native technologies, which is the um, mission of the CNCF. So um, in that light, how should we think about using our time and queuing up these assessments? If people have thoughts. Well, uh, uh, I don't know if uh, if we if we start approaching uh, projects, uh, we will be able to keep up with the scale. But uh, for sure, approaching projects that are uh, I don't know super popular, we can define what what is super popular later. Uh, uh, what benefit, like for in general, the cloud uh, adoption? Let's call it. So, Does anybody else have any thoughts about like, I, like I'm really curious, I've thought about like, there's some projects that aren't CNCF projects that are very widely used, right? And then there are ones that are CNCF projects that are less widely used, right? Um, and, you know, and how should we think about like, what level of use presents more risk people have? I, Given that SIG security is from the CNCF, I would tend to focus scope on CNCF specific projects. And that if there is an effort outside of CNCF that is widely used, 
um, that perhaps it should be looked at bringing brought into the fold um, for inclusion within the CNCF and review by security. I, I worry that the landscape is so large that just saying, because there's a large project out there that everybody's already using, can you guys take a look, when we've already committed to a bunch of other things might stretch current resources too thin. Um, so kind of rescoping it to focus more on CNCF and then maybe evaluating at a later date if there is something that's no kidding part of the ecosystem and so widely used and adopted like almost to the scale of how kubernetes is um maybe those ones should be the exception to that rule and they have to have i don't know some quorum of agreement for review you know my suggestion and yeah point taken i, I my thinking about this is it's the degree of dependency and this kind of begs the questions of uh, justin's supply chain project, you know, what counts as the highly dependent ones, but the ones that are widely employed in the DevOps space, but that are not CNCF, but are part of the tools pipeline should be at least addressed, even if we, you know, uh, address the fact that we really don't take a deep dive into them. But we, we should also not forget that we rely on participation of the project, right? So if there is a project that is not part of CNCF and, you know, could be hostile to the CNCF for whatever reason, they, they, are, they are probably less likely to participate in something like that. But we, we do rely on, 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 on having some goodwill from the project owners. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, we have, um, just to tell everybody what we've been doing, we have, for practical reasons, favored projects who are excited to participate. Um, and I, I, I like that idea because we, we have really, I think, um, been successful in making this a collaborative approach so far. Yeah, my, my take on this is that um, the, I mean, I feel a lot of the security stuff came before, the stuff that came before cloud native, like the key management solutions and stuff like that. Um, I think it's important to consider it within the landscape, but I don't, I'm not sure whether really having a security assessment of it is really necessary since I think a lot of these projects are usually very well established or have been there and they are kind of being looked at at other users of security besides cloud native as well. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that, that the person who first brought up widely used was that it, it's not clear how we would define that. And so if it's so widely used that everybody understands its security profile, then <laughs> there's something, there's somewhere, you know, I think that, that there's widely used as a proxy for need. Um, so, so I think that's a good point, Brandon. Yeah, things like the Linux kernel, where I'm not sure that they have <clears throat> actually established enough of a security baseline right a lot of people are working to make sure that the kernel is secure but i'm not sure that linus cares but uh, that's what se linux kind of does so there i mean there's already other efforts involved in that yeah. and the linux foundation itself and openstack also have security groups so like i worry about expanding the scope well, of this group into other areas that have their own respective security teams so we're not stepping on everybody's toes mm -hmm. that's a really good point and i think uh, for the people who are new we have two things that are filters for what we work on and one of them is it actually has to be cloud native so linux is often used in the cloud but it isn't really particularly like it's also used outside of the cloud we talked about like spam filters for email right like it's we don't you know, like it 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 pre it doesn't require the cloud it you know it, it it's not specific to cloud so we really want to focus our efforts on things that are really different because of cloud and cloud native to whatever we think that means um and then the other thing is we try to if there is a group already doing a thing and we try to reach out and invite that person to tell us about it or learn about it and I think CII best practices is a good example of that, that we've kind of like folded into um, our process a little bit. And then we, um, and we brought in um, experts from NIST and from um, Kubernetes groups. And so I think so far we've done a pretty good job about that. So Emily, really good point. 
um, that uh, we want to continue to do that. Other thoughts on how to figure out priorities of our assessments? But one of the things that might be interesting is, is what priority should the recertification get, right? So if we still have a backlog of projects that we have never looked at, is it really useful to look at a project again to make sure that they didn't fall out of, you know, whatever compliance standards we have? I, I really think at least for the time being, we can solve all this by just having the TSC tell us. Just tell them what bandwidth we have and then they pick. Um, we can make suggestions, but uh, I, I think, I mean, Christian, you're absolutely right. But I, I feel like we're, um, you know, we, I don't know. But the TOC is supposed to guide us in this area. So doing what's most useful for them probably makes us the most useful SIG. Yeah, I think what I was saying is that we have so far gotten, like, we can, you know, we're going to talk to Liz and Joe about this and in an upcoming, hopefully our first meeting with them together. Um, and I wanted to make sure that if we had strong feelings in the membership group, that we brought that to them too, because I think we sometimes, I mean, we're, we're lucky now because we have people who actually know a lot about security on the TOC. Whereas last year, it was um, there were very few people on the TOC who were as knowledgeable about security as Joe and Liz are. So we kind of, in that void, um, had to, you know, like we were bringing to them what we thought was, and they were looking to us to say, what, what are the things that are be safe? We're supposed to validate if they, if they are missing something, right? We want to raise it. Any other thoughts or shall we? I think just maybe one final one on that one. Uh, some members may have already done security assessments or liked security assessments of some of the products anyway. Um, and I think, you know, if, if people are willing to share that sort of information, at least as a, a, uh, an initial stage, that might be useful contribution back to the group. Not to sway the prioritization specifically, I kind of agree with Justin on that one, but um, Look, if you already implemented half of it, um, you know, might as well bring it to the table um, and, and assist that way. Actually, that's a really good point because we do that with the audits where, you know, like we, we had this vision that like the assessment would inform an audit, but if audits have already happened, we read them as part of the assessment and just pulling together that. And I think you're, you're absolutely right that there's a lot of the member companies that would be happy to share audits that they've done that cover the open source um, projects if, if they happen to have them. So that, that's, I think that's a way that we can use the CNCF and um, the end user community and figure out how to uh, communicate to them. Would that be beneficial to include, um, not necessarily in the projects area, but in a separate area of, here's ones that security hasn't personally looked at, but here's what we already know about them. So if we're trying to encourage people to come to us to understand what it is that we've done and what the security status of a particular project or effort looks like, they also have that as a resource to dive into. Um, I think that's a great idea. I think we have a, a issue open for like some kind of an index. So um, that would be a great thing to yeah, have. Yeah, the assessments is listing one. I just commented on it. Thanks. What, what NIST does in this space to, to deal with this problem is to have conformance levels and expect that you're not going to audit everybody. And some people that you don't reach that are not purely cloud native can self-certify or at least, you know, disclose what level of conformance that they have to this. And if you go in that direction, it's the declarations and uh, process around the audit that's more important than the audit itself in the long run. Uh, but you have to establish the value by doing good audits. So it's, it's not either or. That's a good point. Lorenzo says, I have a cardboard with priorities on it. 
Yeah, on your right. On the other side. Oh, behind you. Oh. I do? Yes. Oh. I have priority mail. <laughs> How topical. <laughs> <laughs> um, fabulous. Oh, and then I also wanted to call on Justin Cormack because you've been involved in, you, you were involved in this as a TOC contributor with Justin Capos before we um, became a SIG. Um, and if you had any thoughts to um, whether there've been, you know, you've been involved in discussions about how those um, activities got prioritized in the past or thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think, I, I don't have any inside information. I wasn't directly involved in discussions with the TOC. Um, so I, I did get the impression from the meeting yesterday that some people had strong opinions about prioritization and that <laughs> we're slightly, the, the, the discussion over the, that seems to take quite a long time. So I, I, I don't know. I think that we should just listen to them. And, yes. But you, so I think one of, one of the things... You, can't, you know, you can't force people to prioritize things they don't want to do. And these are volunteers. And I think that if people want to do work that we all agree is important, then we, we shouldn't stop people doing it either. Yeah, I think one of the things that I'm trying to increase is transparency because there was some question about why we did in Toto first before their CNCF project. But in fact, we did in Toto because we were asked to buy the prior TOC. So we need to do a better job of communicating, hey, TOC, you asked for these things and we are doing them. Yeah. New TOC I members, this is what we're doing, right? And so I think Amy is gonna actually help us get into like a heartbeat of communication with the TOC so that as new members come in, there's some continuity. Yeah, and I think they, they seem to recognize that they need a more structured onboarding process for new projects because it is very ad hoc. So maybe they will formally ask us to do assessments for some or all of the projects to, that are coming in, which would, which would definitely make sense, but well, I think, but, but it, obviously there are, I mean, looking at the current backlog, there are a huge number of projects potentially coming in as sandbox. So, or maybe not all the sandbox, I don't know, you know, so they, they need to make that more clear. Yeah. And part of it was, I think before there was such a backlog, when in the era of like Q4 last year, they asked us to look at in Toto as a way to pre-filter in Toto before they gave a presentation. And that they said, well, well, anybody says they want to give a presentation to the TOC, why don't you do a security assessment if they're a security related project, right? Which is why we're, we queued up Keycloak. So it's a process. Um, and I think that what I was referring to is actually, I think there needs to be a onboarding of TOC members <laughs> that maybe we should think about when there's a new TOC elected next year that we invite them to tell them what the SIG security does. Or we have like us, you know, maybe Amy could have a all new TOC members. This is what all the SIGs do. So that yeah. there's a little more continuity for the TOC because we treat them as if they're one body, but they're actually different people every year. Well, there will be more overlap in future. It was only historical reasons there was so much change. Okay. So I think I think it'll be 50-50, not almost 100% next time. Even in terms of, because I think the seats are now... A mix of different. So now staggered more. Yeah. Great. And so, and on the prioritization thing, um, it's not ready for discussion, but um, I just wanted to let you know this process that I referred to before of like making things labeled as projects. So, um, the triage team and um, the chairs are working to catalog the things that we're actually working on and. I'm experimenting with this board so that we can see, oh, look, here are some things in progress. We don't have, we haven't captured everything in progress. And the idea is that these are, there's a lot of little things in progress where one person is working on a PR to clarify something or to, and so this is supposed to capture the things that a group of people are doing together that require coordination and attention. And we probably don't want too many of these things at once because some of them might 
need extra help and let's make sure that we finish something before starting a new thing. So, um, so I just wanted to give you an idea that this is, the, this is uh, like what we're working towards. And then once we collect all of these things, we'll um, get insights from Joe and Liz, and we'll also review it with the whole group so we can get everybody's feedback on um, how we're prioritizing things. Because we, we want to have all, all the various proposals and different things. We, and we might even get to the point where we have requests for proposals because we have things that are on our written mode roadmap that we haven't gotten to. So just to let newcomers know, we have a roadmap here, which is very broad, right? And we're kind of in the process of doing this kind of, how do we describe what is cloud native security? And um, there's a lot of enthusiasm for, wait, I know that this thing is missing, let's do it. Um, let's, let's take care of this thing. And we are doing a fairly long, slow process of uh, but I think we we're getting to the end of it, which is, this is what we, this group, think uh, of as cloud native security and having that written down, which is, we've got a number of the artifacts written down already. And then we can actually dive in more into um, filling those gaps. Um, and so, and then we, we started to catalog the things that we've done. And so we envision that this will evolve into um, a things that are a set of proposals, projects, requests for proposals, um, so that people, there's more transparency about what do all these words mean and how do I scrub in and, and help and participate. So more on that later, I just, you know, if people wanna add notes to issues, um, the, the sort of triage work of like, what is this thing? Can, can we just take care of it with a PR or, do we actually have to, do we have a discussion? Is it something that we need multiple people for or we can just take care of with some async discussion? All of that we're trying to like sort of clear the decks. So um, to whatever extent um, people have time and inclination to um, dive in to help us uh, uh, resolve some of the smaller detailed things um, that would help a lot. And then we'll, we'll raise it in a future meeting. And I think that ends our meeting for today. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all next week. Thanks. Happy 4th, if it applies. Oh, yes, for the Americans. Happy Independence Day tomorrow. Brexit 1776, apparently. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Came out ahead on that one. <laughs> Forward thinking. Bye, everybody.